So real quick, before you watch this video, I want to talk to you about SDI. Have you ever thought about making a living in the firearms industry? Well, if you enjoy gun repairs, ballistics, and learning about firearms, Sonoran Desert Institute's online courses might just be a good fit for you. To find out more about them, visit www.sdi.edu or call 480-999-4767. This is the DDM4 V7 Pro from Daniel Defense. So, if you're someone who's on the market for one AR-15 and you want to spend a relatively decent amount of money for one rifle, not the amount that kills the bank, but you also don't want to go the completely affordable side and you only need one AR that you want to do all things, I think this DDM4 V7 Pro makes the case for that rifle. I know some of you are like, oh, it doesn't make any sense. How's that the case? It has an 18 inch barrel. Yada, 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 yada. And I'll explain. All right, so let's talk about how I have this rifle set up. But before I do that, because I'm an homosexual, I'm just gonna do some shooting. All right, so let's talk about, first and foremost, the thing that stands out the most. 18 inch barrel. When I first got into firearms and I was thinking about getting my first rifle, my first rifle was an AK. If I had the chance to do it over again, would I make it the AK? No, it would probably be an AR-15. A lot of that having to do with the modularity. So first and foremost, a lot of people think about buying an AR-15 for home defense. Now, for a lot of people, I run AR-15s for my home defense setup. This is an AR-15. <laughs> Um, it also has an 18 inch barrel. Now, some people may argue that that's too long. I even made that argument once or twice. However, not everybody lives the same way. So a lot of times you're not necessarily gonna be going through your house, clearing corners, looking for whoever's in your house. You may, but that's not necessarily always the case. And to be honest, yes. Would an SBR be a lot better? Yes, it can, and it will. But in t some of the courses that I've taken, uh, more specifically, when I've taken some of Buck's Shut courses up, and I've used longer rifles, I've realized that you can pretty much do close quarter work with a relatively long barreled rifle. It may not be the most optimal, but you can do it. And I don't think 18 inches, at least now I don't, because I used to think it did until a friend of mine kind of made the argument for it. I think for home defense setup, I think this rifle can do it. I don't think it's that, that long or that big where, for instance, if you hear something going bump in the night and you're gonna stay in place, and let's say you had to get behind a bed and let's say you post it up and you're ready for what's coming through the door. At that point, I don't necessarily, it doesn't really matter how long the rifle is at that point because I'm stationary. Now, even if I had to actually go through a house and let's say, for instance, I have to deal with a wall, right? And let's say I am coming around the corner here. Well, at this point, I have all of this to work with. This is about as long as my arm. So if I needed to, especially with the way that I have it set up, where I have this one to six and this RMR, I drop it to the side, come to my 45 degree, and target, and you're good to go. Let's say, for instance, you live out where you have a lot of land. So if you did have a lot of land and you needed to protect your property from distance, well, you get one of these rifles, which with an 18 inch barrel is where I think it actually comes into play. Um, where it gives you actually a lot of real estate in order to put a bigger optic. So this is a Leupold 1 to 6, Mark 6. So from here, I have a one-time magnification. So if I wanted to do something up close, I can. But also, at the same time, if I needed to, I could quickly rotate this and go out to 100. 180, 170, 160 yards. Now, that being said, you're gonna have some explaining to do if you ever have to defend yourself at 100 and some odd 80 yards, but you never know. So, beautiful thing on top of that is, if the one times kind of throws you off and you're looking for something real close, you go just the variation of switching. So I can go long and bring it in and run it close. Let's look at that again. 
Boom. Close. I don't think you can beat this kind of a setup from a home defense standpoint. So, yes, home defense, it can do it. Let's talk about competition shooting. The irony is, the DDM4 V7 Pro is actually kind of set up like a competition rifle. And when I say kind of, I mean it has the features that are pretty geared towards competition style shooting. And what I mean by that is with competition style shooting, you want to be able to kind of shoot fast. You want a gun that's really flat and doesn't do too much walking on you. And in order to get that, usually speaking, you either have a really nice break that mitigates the recoil on the gun, keeping it really flat and shooting flat. But then also, this particular gun comes with the rifle link gas system. What the rifle link gas system does is allow the gun to shoot a lot softer than you would with the shorter link gas system. So you combine the rifle link gas system with the competition style brake, and you get a pretty soft shooting gun, which allows you to do like this. See what I mean? So if I'm running a competition and I'm switching I can do those things. I can transition pretty quickly and get my hits. So, yeah. Then on top of that, in competition, sometimes you have to do things like run with the rifle in your hand. So for instance, if I'm here at a stage and I need to essentially get this shot, two, three, and I gotta run to this next target, I'm here. Now, you're probably asking me, that doesn't make any sense. What, what did you just show or prove that this rifle can do from a running perspective? Well, yes, the barrel is 18 inches, but it's not that heavy. It's not. So you have this M-Lock rail, which is also a lightweight rail, and it allows you to take or mitigate a lot of the weight on the rifle. Right now, I'm running a 1-6 to six and an offset uh, Delta Point Pro and I'm able to kind of take this gun and maneuver with this gun however I feel. So if I come up here, it's, it doesn't feel like an overly cumbersome gun. If I need to bring it up here, or if I need to come down here, pull it up, anything I need to do with this rifle, I can do it. Just like that. And I also forgot to mention the trigger. The gun comes with the Geisley trigger. And what the Geisley trigger allows you to do is what I did earlier, which is you can just run the gun. <laughs> it's freaking beautiful. Uh, and so for a lot of people who don't really know much about triggers on AR-15s, some triggers allow you to shoot a gun more efficiently than others. When you have a really heavy, clunky trigger, you're not gonna be able to run the gun as smoothly as I just did there. With triggers, with the Geisley trigger in it, like this gun has, it allows you to run the gun more smoothly. You add the smoothness, the lightweightness, the maneuverability, and it puts you in a great position to take this gun out and run it as a competition gun, for instance, if you're gonna do something like a three gun. So if you're somebody who's like, again, looking for that one gun, and you're like, hey, I want, I want a home defense gun, I want a gun for sport, which would be competition, Right now, we've covered those two bases. Now, let's talk about recreation. From a recreational side of things, the beautiful thing about this gun, and especially the way that it's set up, is, so let's say I just wanted to go to range and I just want to walk around and you know, just do some playing game. It, it handles it phenomenally. And because of the, the rifle and gas system with the brake, it's an enjoyable gun to shoot. It's not a gun that's gonna beat you to death. You're gonna enjoy going out and shooting it. And to be honest with you, then on top of that, let's say I just wanted to sit back at say, I don't know, 200 yards. Put a bipod on this thing, or put this thing on a bench, and just sit here and just plank if I wanted to. So, you do that too. <laughs> so my last aspect is hunting. One of the beautiful things about having this 18 inch barrel when it comes to hunting is it allows you to maximize the amount of energy that that bullet is actually going to have whenever it hits target. When you start shortening the barrels on rifles, 
you start to lose a lot of that kinetic energy that the rifles, that the actual round is gonna have on target. So with an 18 inch barrel, it allows the bullet to utilize as much of the gas as possible to maximize the amount of energy it's gonna have whenever it hits that target. And when it comes to hunting, and as far as hunting ethically, and making sure that the animal doesn't suffer, you're gonna want as much energy on that bullet as possible in order to get a clean kill. So from a hunting perspective, and then on top of that, like I said, it's not an overly heavy rifle. It's a rifle that is pretty light considering that it's an 18 inch barrel. But then on top of that, when you can have this type of setup where you have a one to six, or you have a close range, if you are in a situation where you're hunting in say, I don't know, cougar territory, where you're hunting an animal and that animal might be quietly hunting you and you don't realize it. Um, you know, I know you've all seen the, the attacks on, on the internet with the cougar chasing people and stuff. Why the dude didn't have a gun? I don't know. No! F you, dude. In the situation where you are hunting, like I said, I can go one to six, which is relatively decent magnification for the distances you might hunt with a round of this nature. Go one to six. If I'm out there and I'm shooting an animal, I can do that. If, if an oh moment happens and I'm like, oh God, there's a cougar and it's coming after me, I can quickly switch and go to my red dot. Kind of best of both worlds. Um, but I just wanted to kind of put that video together really quickly just to talk about how I think this particular rifle and this setup makes for a great 1AR option if you're looking for something in the kind of mid to mid high levels in price as far as price consideration. Daniel Defense rifles run, plain and simple. That just is what it is. I love Daniel Defense. One of the first companies I ever worked with when I started this was Daniel Defense. And I continue to buy and get Daniel Defense rifles to this day. To this day! To this day! You just sit here and you don't know what I'm talking about? If you're on the market and you don't have an AR-15 and you're looking for one AR that will put you in a position to pretty much do everything you might possibly want to do with an AR, like self-defense, sports recreation, and hunting, I think the DDM-4 V7 Pro from Daniel Defense makes an excellent case for that one rifle option. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Today, there was another growing gun confiscation request in all 50 of our states requesting to confiscate our AR-15s. We want the government to know what would happen if they tyrannically passed their so-called assault weapons ban. I will not comply is a symbolization of defiance against politicians, anti-gunners, and any other tyrannical entity looking to deprive you or your Second Amendment right as put forth in the Constitution of the United States. I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is gonna do a phenomenal job of suppressing this message. So please share this video with as many people as you can so we can beat the algorithm and get our two-way message out to the masses. Also, don't forget to like this video and leave a comment and hit the bell and subscribe button. Let my voice be your voice and let them know you wanna keep America tactical because the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed wasn't a suggestion, it was a directive. Also, if you're wondering where to purchase your AR-15s are essential, I will not comply. I am the militia. I lost all my guns in a boating accident and your state-specific Keep America Tactical shirt. Click the link next to my head or the link in the description section. Or if you're watching this on a mobile device, tap the small triangle on the lower right-hand side of this video and click the link in the description.